we just saw Lamborghini unveil the new Urus. I know you're more of a Ferrari guy, but what are your thoughts on Lamborghini building an SUV? Well, uh, that's probably the only part that will not interest me <laughs> as far as the Lamborghini is <laughs> concerned, but, uh, but they're saying that it's the fastest one on the market and uh, you know they're trying to uphold their reputation, uh, but they, they've been building really fabulous cars. And uh, yeah, between Ferrari and Lamborghini, I've been enjoying that very much. In fact, uh, I own a Lamborghini right now. You do? What do you own, if you don't mind my asking? It's a new, it's a new Aventador S. Yeah, with the, with the rear steering? With the rear steering on it too, which yes, makes it handle much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you like it, I presume? Love it, love the car, yeah. It is a great car. Okay, so love you just it. unveiled the new 2018 IndyCar. We got some interesting changes coming up this year. Let's start by talking about the new steering wheel. There's a lot more technology in there before, a lot more displays and a lot more other stuff built in there from Cosworth. Well, as we say, you know, obviously technology just keeps advancing and so on and so forth. And, uh, and they're putting more system, as many systems as allowed, you know, for the driver to be able to change and do uh, all the tuning that uh, is necessary. Not only engine tuning, but a little bit of chassis tuning as well. So it's all there, right? You know, at your fingertip and there. But the thing about the new car, uh, as we see it, it's really, it's a new dress on, on the same chassis uh, of the past, but uh, it's a really evolutionary in the sense, uh, because of uh, taking away quite a bit of a surface aerodynamics, which produces a lot of the turbulence that you know, precludes you from really following quick without losing the front end and all that. And of course, uh, this should make the field much more competitive, be able to be uh, to follow tighter and be able to do much better overtaking. And uh, by taking some of the surface aerodynamics, that's where you frontal air penalty comes from, the car really comes alive. That's what the drivers have been saying, you know, in initial testing. Oh my gosh, we have basically the same power, but the car feels like we have a lot more power. So, especially on the road courses, it's going to be really a lot more fun to drive because you're going to get to slide off the corners and everything else. It's going to be a lot of more movement. Not all the drivers are going to be in love with that, <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, most, I think, uh, will like it because I think drivers like to have a car that's really alive. And so, uh, and you're putting actually uh, some of it back to the drivers when you have to do a lot more car control. So um, that's a premium that uh, most of them should obviously welcome, quite honestly. But uh, really, really, uh, I, I kudos to IndyCar for making this giant step. Uh, as we know, the audiences today, I mean, they, uh, they're much more sophisticated, of course, they're more knowledgeable, and they expect more. You know, Absolutely. every series has these challenges, you know, they want more action. They don't want any parades, you know, and, uh, and it's hard, and you know, uh, you can't guarantee that, but, as long as the sanctioning body does the level best to try to achieve that, you know, by tweaking this and tweaking that, I mean, uh, uh, you know, you're going to get something out of it for sure. That's and that's going to be positive. That's something that a lot of Formula One fans have been asking for too. Changes to the aerodynamics to allow the racing to be a little bit more close. So that's really exciting that IndyCar is making that move to allow the cars to run a little bit more closer without losing all that crucial downforce. Listen to the drivers. <laughs> Listen to the drivers. Drivers always know, right? Uh, well. The drivers are the ones that are there, have to do the job ultimately. And uh, like even Formula One, it, you know, Lewis has been to Lewis Hamilton has been just, he said, if they have one complaint, it's that. So uh, IndyCar addressed that in a very big way. And uh, I love that. I love that aspect. It's a great looking car too. The, the changes to it also give it more of a throwback look almost, makes it look more like yeah, the 90s cars in some ways. Brought back more the purity of a single-seater open-wheel car. I think uh, the previous model, all of a sudden, was coming around and was beginning to look like a sports prototype. You know, with the mm. winglets and and so many other things. Uh, it was not clean. You know, and uh, this brings it back to the, you know, the pure sense of what we really like. You know, even aesthetically, has to you know, has to be appealing. And uh, this car really is actually. So with the focus more on the drivers and driver control now, anybody yeah. that you think is the hot ticket to watch for next year? Any teams or drivers? Well, you know, uh, I, have, a uh, I have I a lot of skin in the game, obviously, you know, <laughs> and uh, my son is an owner, but also my grandson is a driver. And the best thing I could have heard was music to my ears. The first test, the feedback from Marco is, you know what, this is more my cup of tea. He said, I just really, I get better feel of the car 
now is it because okay it's moving around but at least I feel like I'm just following the car more rather than I have a lot of downforce you don't know when you're gonna have that giant breakaway and all that so again uh, the fact that he likes it I love it. <laughs> <laughs> where do you see IndyCar going from here what sort of other technologies and other developments are you looking to see coming down the road in a few years time well you know obviously uh, what you're trying to do you know you, you try to make you, with technology, with what we know today, you, you can make the car you know, autonomous almost, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So uh, the, I think the challenge is for the uh, sanctioning body is with all the technologies, have the technology, but also make sure that the driver has a job to do. You know, don't make it so easy. Like we could have traction control and all those things, and it's been tried, but then eliminated. You still, you know, the challenge is not as much as putting in more technology, is to just keep it a sport so the driver is really a big element of this thing you know so uh, you don't want to give them too many aids mm -hmm. if you will and uh, and like, like I said in recent years that's been an enormous challenge across the board in motorsports and I want to get your thoughts on autonomy this great quote that's attributed to you that, which is uh, if everything seems under control you're not going fast enough which is uh, one of my favorite quotes of all time but that, of course, changes when we're talking about moving into an autonomous world where we're not in control at all because now the car is doing all the driving. What's your thoughts on autonomous cars on the road? Are you looking forward to that future or do you always want to be driving? Are you kidding? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> do you know who you're talking to? I do know who I'm talking to. <laughs> uh, maybe my wife. <laughs> no, so, but uh, no, I mean, uh, uh, I think it's obviously it's going to have its usefulness, no question. Um, no question about it, and I always encourage uh, technology, but uh, uh, give me a steering wheel. And a manual transmission and, too, I imagine. And a manual trans. well, yeah, paddles, you know, it's fine, you know, but, um, uh, but how about let, let me be the boss, let me be the boss. What about driving among autonomous cars? Is that going to be concerning to you to have, you know, to be on the highway looking around and seeing people reading books and watching movies and that kind of thing? Well, uh, I, I think I could deal with that as long as, like I say, I have control of my own destiny here. You know, I could deal with that. And do you know how much that quote has resonated in the startup world? All these startup companies use that quote as basically the idea of moving forward very quickly. And that's, that's taken on a kind of a new life for it. Well, yeah, no question. Like I said, it's, uh, you cannot stop progress. You know, I mean, that's the beauty of it. I mean, just look around. I mean, eye candy, like, you know, fabulous. I mean, look what... Uh, manufacturers offer the public, you know, and uh, and for a car guy like myself, obviously, uh, uh, I mean, it's just so fabulous to see what is out there to choose from, and and, uh, and the excitement is there, no question. Uh, like I said, there's going to be just like in racing, a time where for some of the purists, like myself, you know, uh, I don't need all of that help type of thing. Uh -huh. You know, I don't need when I. Uh, it's okay if uh, when I get close to the car, if the door opens by itself, that's okay. But once I get in it, you know, I want to do it myself. And we talked about your Aventador, one of the sweetest sounding cars on the road today, but we're moving to a time where electric cars are actually getting to the point oh. where they're quicker than gas cars. So what do you think? <laughs> the sound of uh, an electric car with a straight cut transmission, is that going to get your heart going like that, uh, that big V12 will? Um, I don't want to date myself. <laughs> <laughs> You okay. know, but um, um, when you see a beautiful sports car and uh, you turn the key on the electric car and it's got a little buzz or you or got a 12 cylinder engine normally like that explodes, which was which one brings tears to your eyes? I mean, tears yeah. of happiness. Yeah, it's the V12. OK, yeah, enough said. All right, that's fair enough. <laughs> Even if you can get more torque, even if you can get zero to 60 in like two seconds flat, you'd still rather have the, the emotion, the sound? The yeah, the initial torque is okay, but it just, it doesn't have, you know, the long range, you know, so that's, that's typical. You get in the golf cart, oh, you know, right away, but then there's <laughs> nothing after that. So, you know, that, that's the part that the, you can impress people with, you know, the initial torque. But, uh, it, it, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's going to be another mode of transportation, and as long as we have a choice, I'm good. 
I think we'll have a choice for a long time. Uh, not to get too sad, but I did want to get your thoughts on Dan Gurney, who we just lost a couple of days ago. Uh, obviously, a, a great racer and a really a great, you know, broad uh, reach of skills, much like yourself, able to have success in Formula One, NASCAR, and everything else. Can I get your thoughts on, on, on Dan and his career and, and what he meant to you over uh, all these years? It is, uh, he was, you know, uh, I'm feels so uh, you know, special that uh, I can call him my friend. We've been friends for many years. We've raced together. Uh, toward the end of his career, actually, he was very active in IndyCars, and, uh, and that's when IndyCar was really delving into road racing, and, and most of the road races were between he and I. And uh, he was my senior, and uh, me, just the fact that I know that I could compete against him, and I was competitive, I mean, it was a huge lift, and, uh, and that's when I obviously uh, grew the appreciation for him in so many ways because he, he was an inspiration for me uh, from when I was like uh, pretty much beginning because of his love for Formula One, the fact that he went to Formula One when I was still in midgets. And, you know, my objective was to, to go there as an American driver, going to Europe and going with a top team initially with Ferrari, figure, oh my God. I have a chance maybe somewhere, <laughs> you know, it just gives you that hope, you know, and uh, our friendship developed over the years, it got stronger and stronger and, uh, and you can never ever prepare for losing someone of that magnitude and uh, so a uh, huge loss, you know, for millions of people that uh, appreciated this man and for so many reasons, um, yeah, my heart really goes out to Abby and, and the, entire, the whole family. Um, it's, uh, this, this was quite sudden, obviously. I spoke with him at length between Christmas and New Year. You know, we had a nice chat with he and Abby and just chatting and he always called me champ. It was kind of cute always, you know. He was the champ and, uh, uh, you know, talk about champ. I mean, as far as Formula One, if he would have driven, you know, he had his objective, you know, his goals to have the American car, have his own manufacturer. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but with his talent, if he would have driven for, say, McLaren, Lotus, or Ferrari, continuing his career, he would have been mul multiple world champion. You know, he was that class of a driver. Mario, uh, I can't thank you enough for joining us up here on stage. Uh, a real hero of mine, a real pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much Thanks for coming me. with us. All right, we've got to get set up now for our Roadshow Shift Awards that are coming up in just a few minutes. We'll be giving away five awards for cabin technology, safety technology, driveline technology. We'll give you our Disruptor of the Year and our Vehicle of the Year. Stay with us right here.